Hello everyone, I'm Julia Donaldson. I do hope that you're all enjoying life at home and that those of you who go to school aren't missing your school friends too much. Today's story is about a classroom bear. He's got lots of friends at school, but in this story, he goes on a big adventure without any of them. With her blue pointy shoes and her hair in a bun, Mrs. McAllister teaches class one. That's Ollie and Holly and Josie and Jay, Leo and Theo and April and May, Billy and Lily and little Lee Woo, Daisy and Maisie and Matt, who is new, Hannah Hazala, Callum and Claire, Kevin and Bev, and the Everywhere Bear. The Everywhere Bear has a home on a shelf, but he doesn't spend very much time by himself, for each boy and girl in the class is a friend, and he goes home with one of them every weekend. On Mondays, they carry him back to class one and tell all the others the things that he's done. He has bus rides with April and horse rides with May. He eats burgers with Billy and jelly with Jay. With Lee Wu, he's a pirate. With Kevin, a king. And Callum and Claire push him high on the swing. He bounces with Bev and does handstands with Holly. He likes playing football with Maisie and Ollie. He always makes dens when he goes home with Daisy. At Lily's, they let him be lovely and lazy. With Leo and Thea, he tinkles a tune. With Hannah Hazala, he goes to the moon. With Josie, he whizzes about in a chair. No wonder they call him the everywhere bear. One rainy Monday, a new boy called Matt was splashing to school when he spotted a cat. And when he bent over to give it a cuddle, the everywhere bear tumbled into a puddle. Just round the corner, a driver called Pete sat in a van painting stripes on the street. Matt got to school and sat down on his chair. He opened his bag and the bear wasn't there. Nobody knew that the poor little fellow, just like the street, had been painted bright yellow. Nobody saw when a river of rain washed him and whooshed him head first down the drain. And no one was there when the bear with the stripe dirty and dizzy, splashed out of the pipe. The water was wild and the weather was wet when Jim, Jeff and Jonathan hauled in their net. Waves rocked the boat and a storm filled the air. None of them noticed the everywhere bear. Back in the harbour, Mohammed Hussein lifted the fish off the boat with his crane. Give me two boxes, said old Mrs. Bishop, and she cheerfully wheeled them away to her fish shop. She started unpacking and muttered, that's odd. There's a bear wrapped in seaweed between these two cod. Out of the fish shop and onto a skip, into a lorry and off to the tip. Aha! Squawked a seagull called Solomon Shriek. I smell fish! And he picked up the bear in his beak. They flew over treetops and over the town, and the bear saw his school when he dared to look down. Then Solomon perched on the roof of a shop. This isn't a fish! And he leapt the bear drop. Then a very kind lady called Bethany Burke picked the bear up on her way into work. Each Friday morning class one pays a visit to one of their favourite places. Where is it? The library. Jay finds a book about stars. Josie finds one about buses and cars. Billy likes aliens and Lily likes lizards. Hannah Hazala is keener on wizards. Finally, 
everyone's chosen a book. They queue at the counter. Then Matt cries out, Look! April and May and the others say, Where? Behind you! He's there! It's the everywhere bear! Then they carry him happily home to class one, saying, Where have you been, bear? And what have you done? The bear never talks, but he smiles to himself and thinks as he settles back down on his shelf. I've been in a puddle, I've been down a drain, I've been in a boat, and I've been in a crane. I've been in a shop, and I've been on a skip, I've been on a lorry, I've been on a tip. I've been in a beak, and I've been in the air. No wonder they call me the everywhere bear. I hope you like that story. As you can see, I've got my own everywhere bear here. Oh, he just wants to say, whisper something in my ear. Oh, he says he quite liked it in the library. Yes, I really like libraries too, everywhere bear. I'm really looking forward to them opening again when we're all back to normal. Well, this everywhere bear was actually made for me by the illustrator of that book, Rebecca Cobb. And I'm going to hand you over to Rebecca now. Hello, thank you very much for the introduction, Julia. I'm very excited to be joining you today. And first of all, I'm going to show you how I draw the everywhere bear. So I usually start with his ears on the top of his head, like this, two ears. And then I'll come down the front of his face to draw the shape of his nose over here. And then under his chin there, and I give him a nose, a little mouth, he's quite happy bear really, and then his eye just here, eye is the trickiest part, because that's where most of their expression is, that's his eye, and then I'm going to draw his back. He doesn't really have a neck, the everywhere bear. It just sort of goes straight into his back, like this. And he's sitting down, so we've got his feet coming along the bottom. And then the other side of him tummy going into his other leg here like that he's got two legs out in front of him sitting down his one arm there and his other arm is down the side here if it's got a little bit wonky <laughs> we go. And then I'll give him a bit of a shadow to sit on, like that. And then he's got orange in his ears and then on the bottom of his feet. And rosy cheeks. He's a, he's a sort of pale brown teddy bear colour and he's quite fluffy so I colour it, I colour him in like this just so that he gives him that fluffy cosy teddy bear look. Sign it. 
and here's the drawing of Bear. And while I'm here, I'm just going to show you one more thing, which is how you can make your own paper dolls. And I've got here a piece of paper, something to draw with, and a pair of scissors. And I'm just going to very quickly show you. Um, you start by folding up your piece of paper into the number of times that you want to have a paper doll. So I'm going to use five, five times because I want to have five paper dolls. And you fold it like a concertina. So you fold it one direction and then the opposite direction and then the opposite direction again and you keep doing that until you folded up your whole piece of paper and it should look sort of like that at the end like a zigzag and then I'm going to draw onto my folded up paper I'm going to draw the shape I want to cut out of the dolls so a head, arms, legs and what I'm doing is I'm making the arms and the legs go right to the edge and off the edge. It's really important that you do that because that's how they're going to be holding hands when you cut them out. So their arms and legs Go right to the edge like that and then you get your scissors and cut out that shape with the paper still folded up and the idea is that when you unfold it hopefully you'll have a row of paper dolls and they should if it works <laughs> all be holding hands and you don't have to join their feet as well, but it can just give them a bit more strength if their feet also join. So I'm just going to do this very quickly, cut along the shape of the person, like this. One last cut. There. And this is the really fun bit. Hopefully now when I open it up, They will all be in a row and then you can draw your characters on them and colour them in. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you Rebecca. That really brought back memories. I used to love making paper dolls when I was little. Well Rebecca and I have written another book together. It's called It's a Little Baby. And it's really a song which I wrote for my oldest grandchild when she was just about nine or ten months old. And it's got a lot of the things in it that babies of that age like doing, like pointing and waving and clapping. So you're going to hear the song, I'm singing it and Mal Malcolm's playing the guitar, but you're going to see Rebecca's children showing you how to do some of those actions. It's a little baby and she's peeping at you Can you peep, can you peep, can you peep too? Somebody's hiding, I wonder who It's a little baby and he's pointing at you Can you point, can you point, can you point too? Somebody's hiding, I wonder who it's a little baby and he's waving at you Can you wave, can you wave, can you wave too? Somebody's hiding, I wonder who It's a little baby and she's clapping with you Can you clap, can you clap, can you clap too? Somebody's hiding, I wonder who 
a little baby and she's dancing for you. Can you dance? Can you dance? Can you dance too? Thank you very much, Kit and Sorrel. You were really good at doing those actions. And I hope that some of you are joining in at home as well. And I also hope you'll join me next week because I've got another story for you then. It's called The Go Away Bird. And you're also going to be meeting the illustrator of that book, Catherine Rayner. See you then.